Battle of the Bridge. My name is Dave yeah. Zini, and I'm here with Norristown Area High School principal, Mr. Mr. Ed Roth, and we are about ready to kick off on a, well, Ed, somewhat, um, I guess, damp day here at the Norristown Area High School Athletic Complex. Yeah, Dave, I don't know that this is the weather we had in mind, but this is football weather, and here we go. Here we go. Eagles about to kick off to the visiting Upper Marion Vikings. Kick off set. Here we go. Good deep kick by the Eagles. Upper Marion's number 23, Kyan Lobin turns. He's got some room to go. He gets out close to midfield. Eagles have got to do a better job than that on special teams, giving up far too much in the first play. Yeah, no doubt about it, especially on a day like today. Special teams can make all the difference. But still on the uh, Upper Marion side of the field, so the defense has a chance to uh, get some work in here. Rains have picked up here considerably, and by considerably, I mean an awful lot in the first, like, six seconds of the game. So, Ed, as you said, it's going to be, it's going to be a wet one. Yeah, not just on the field, but also uh, here in the press box. This is, this is great. <laughs> the elements have come to us. Handoff to number four across the 45. It's across the midfield, and it's going to be second and short for Upper Marion. Uh, the Vikings offensive line coming out and establishing themselves early. It was a great off-tackle run by the Vikings. Second and three here. Second and two here for Upper Marion. Um, I have a live mic. Here we go. Backs in the eye. Ours down to defense sets up. Handoff again goes to number four, Zaire Savage, who picks up a first down. Savage had great help there from the fullback. Fullback something you don't see as much anymore in today's football, but uh, the fullback did a great job sealing off Christian Thomas on the end. No, I mean, with all the unconventional formations anymore, and especially a lot of high schools going to the shotgun, you really don't see the fullback. I mean, I remember back in the day when I played, backs in the eye was pretty much the standard set. Like, that was it. That's what you did. You just three yards in a cloud of dust. But offense is getting more sophisticated. But backs, you know, backs in the eye. Here we go. Handoff again. Why change what works? Except short pickup. Good D up front for the Eagle. Yeah, Eagles defense stepping up to the task there. And a day like today, probably see a lot of power eye and power football from both teams. Nice to see the Eagles defense stepping up the game right there. Yeah, there's no way that I'm putting the ball in the air on a day like this. I'm just keeping it on the ground. Uh, probably passing just in uh, maybe some desperate situations here, but a lot of ground and pound as we go through this game. Second and long for Upper Marion. Backs in the eye. Here's the handoff again to Zaire Savage. He picks up about five, six yards. Nice carry. Good surge by the deep, by the offensive line of Upper Marion yet again. Yeah, and I don't want to keep pointing out Christian Thomas, but there he is with a really good play following that down the line, coming from that left end spot and, uh, you know, coming in on the back end of that tackle. Third and five for Upper Marion. We'll see if they finally throw. There's a flag on the play. Looked like some motion in the backfield before the play started and uh looks like upper marion's coming back five on this one with 935 here to go in the first quarter just kicking off on a rainy day here at the norristan area high school athletic complex i'm dave Mazzini along with ed roth we're bringing you the battle of the bridge and i gotta tell you i am thrilled to be here sitting next to the voice of norristown <laughs> eagles football <laughs> this is me. a lot of fun this is a lot of fun i, I haven't done a game in a long time and ed going to be a good game. Hand off again. And Norristown is ready for that. That was fooling no one. And it's going to be fourth down for Upper Marion. Great swarm tackle there. The defense all over that. Everyone coming in. You see big number 40, Ramir Wiggins, coming in there and finishing the play off. And uh, here we go. Fourth down. Hopefully the Eagles get the ball back here. We'll see what Upper Marion's going to do here. Uh, that's a 40. Going for it is a risky move. That will put the Eagles in a great position should they stop them. But then again, you probably don't 
punt here either. So this is kind of one of those situations where a coach really has to make some of those hard choices. Uh, you know, the great thing about being a coach, Dave, is no matter what you do, if it goes well, people forget you exist. And uh, if it doesn't go well, then people are sure to point out the coach's decision here. That's right. Here we go. They are going to pass. They're throwing. And incomplete. It's going to be Eagles ball in good field position. So the Eagles take over on down. That's a great stand there by the Eagles defense after that long kickoff return. Even if that ball's caught right there, I don't think that he's going to get the first down yardage. No, no way. Eagles defense swarm into the ball. Good speed. There was high risk and no reward. First down for the Eagles at the 38 with 8.39 left to go here in the first quarter. Denalfi under center. Backs in the eye. Denalfi takes the snap. Hands it off to number 22, Vincent Gorski. Gors or no, uh, sorry, number 22, Larry Hill. I was looking at the wrong roster there for a second. I'm looking at Larry Hill there at tailback. Hill brings it up. Gain of two. And Larry trying to bounce it outside there. Didn't have a whole lot to work with. So sometimes getting two yards is uh, the best you can do. And all in all, not a bad run. Very sloppy day here. North Center High School Athletic Complex, second and eight. Fumble on the hand on the snap. Denalfi picks it up and picks up about one, making something out of what otherwise was really not much. No, we're probably going to see quite a bit of that today. Not necessarily an indication of sloppy play, just sloppy conditions. Great composure there by the QB to pick that up and pick up a couple yards. Yeah, there's really nothing you can do. Like, this is why there's not going to be a lot of passing today. This is just suboptimal field conditions. A lot, you're going to see a lot of fumbles, a lot of miscues, and hopefully the Eagles don't make any that are going to put them in a bad spot. Third down and eight. Third, third down looks like seven here. Nalfi under center. Ball dropped again, and it looks like Upper Marion recovers the fumbled snap. Well, we got away with one in the last play, and it's a lot to ask from the offensive line there to keep those guys out from falling on the ball twice. But like we said, that's uh, going to happen, and time for the defense to make another stand. Yeah, defense is kind of picking up right where they left off here with stopping Upper Marion to just this spot on the 39, and they're going to have to stop him again as Upper Marion comes out on offense. I think at some point it's going to start to get tempting here for the coaches. Not necessarily now, but as the game goes along, a lot of running. Everybody's going to start to crowd the line. And those QBs are going to see a lot of room downfield and want to toss the ball a little bit. See if, especially maybe in the second half, if coaches give in and call a couple, couple throws down the field. Blitz for the Eagles, but they hand it off to Savage. They beat the blitz on that play. Nice gain by Savage. Picks up the first down for Upper Marion. It's going to be actually very, very close. Looks like they're going to... Give it to him, depending on the spot. Let's take a look. Yes. Yes, they did. They picked up the first down. Gain of 10. Upper Marion's got first and 10 from the 29. Dave, I got to give a quick shout out here to the cheerleaders who they are out here braving the conditions. It is miserable out there on the field, but they are here in force. Absolutely, the cheerleaders are out here today, and like these conditions are really wet. There's like a half inch of rain on the turf and on the track. Not great. But as you said before, this is football weather, and I remember many games at the old Roosevelt Field playing in conditions just like this. The advantage here, though, is we're on turf, so we didn't have, we have like, we're playing like three or four inches of mud, and it's, it's not like that out here. It just feels beautiful. And you know who's most excited about that is the equipment guys. They don't got to clean all that mud off the uniforms like back in the day. Absolutely. Second and nine here for Upper Marion. Handoff again goes to Savage. Savage off tackle, and it looks like Savage is going to bring it in for an Upper Marion touchdown. That was a great run off tackle by Savage. 
Upper Marion picks it up. Touchdown, runs it in from 29. Not a great start there, but these conditions, sometimes that's going to happen. A couple people slip, lose their footing. That's what's going to happen. Yeah, the right side of the Vikings offensive line really doing a nice job here early, uh, hitting all their blocks. You know, Savage is a, kind of a straight up and down runner, uh, comes through, but uh, when you got a hole that big, he's going to be able to get some yards. So something the Eagles will work on as they come back out later in the quarter. Extra point for the Vikings. Kick is up. The kick is just barely, just barely gets over the bar, but it does, and it's now 7-0 here on NASD TV from the Norris Area High School Athletic Complex. 6.08 left to go in the first quarter. Upper Marion takes a 7-0 lead. You know, Dave, a lot of optimism here with Eagles football. New coach, Coach Milligan here. Uh, a lot of guys been out, not just now, but all summer long. You see a lot of guys in camp, and the guys are really excited. I think the community is excited, too, and maybe not tonight because of the weather, but I think we're going to start to see the stadium fill up a little bit, and I think that we're going to see that the Eagles have a the beginning of something special here. I agree. I mean, I, I played. I had the honor of playing with both uh, head coach Joe Milligan and the defensive coordinator, uh, Ra Ra Lusain and both great guys and very happy for him. Glad that Joe uh, Joe's bringing kind of a new positive energy. Both of these guys are very high energy and the Eagles are a young team and going to have your struggles with the young team, but Coach Milligan's got him, got him in a good spot. Yeah, he has the right mindset. You know, not just football and X's and O's, but also, you know, growing these guys into great student athletes. Grades are important to him and uh, you know, turning these, you know, boys into men is, is truly something that's a priority for him and his staff. Here's the kickoff by Upper Marion. It's a deep one. And a mishandled there by number 43. Oh, Tucker brings it up. First and 10 for the Eagles from the 27. 601 here to go in the first quarter. 7-0 up for Murray. And off the under center. Ball is on the ground again, so they're having some difficulty with that center to quarterback exchange here in the first half. And that's the third time we've seen this once it's led to a turnover. Maybe a bit of nerves. You know, you start to get a couple plays that don't go your way, and you start to rethink things that should be routine. Interesting there, the Eagles coming out with three guys in the backfield, bringing in some, uh, some of the bigger boys to move the line. So once we get the snap figured out, hopefully we can pound it up the middle here. Second down and 12, Denalfi back under center. Handoff goes to number 33. Santos picks up. Looks like Santos picks up about a yard. Yeah. Going to be third and 12 for the Eagles. These are those situations where with the weather, you're really limited in terms of play calling. Not a lot of great third and 14 plays in the book anyhow, no, but aren't. when the wind is blowing and the rain is coming down hard, you're even more limited. But here they come out a little spread. But again, not going shotgun. Denalfi is under center. Denalfi takes a snap, drops back. Gets it off to Santos, who picks up about three or four. That's not going to be enough. It's fourth down, and the Eagles are going to have to punt. Vikings handled that play rather well. Nice to see first pass, even if it's a short pass, not a whole lot there, but a little confidence for the QB in this weather, completing the pass to the outside. Santos with a nice reception. Because while the weather does render you one-dimensional, you can't stay that way. So eventually, in some, you know, especially like third and 14, you've got to put the ball in the air. Fourth down for the Eagles. Now 
back to punt. Almost blocked, gets the punt away. Well covered by the Eagles, but does take a Viking bounce. It picked up at the 48 by the Eagles. It's going to be first and 10 for the Upper Marion Vikings from the their own 48-yard line. The offense did give the defense a chance to breathe a little bit there. Also getting them out towards midfield. Defense can uh, stuff the middle a little bit. Upper Marion's had a lot of success early, especially on the right side of the Upper Marion line. So see if the Eagles do anything different defensively. I'm sure Coach Lusain on the defensive side is going to bring some more heat and try to take Zaire Savage a little bit out of the game. But Upper Marion has had some success with that so far in the early going here. We'll see if they go right back to him. They do. The handoff is very short. Maybe picks up a yard, maybe two by Savage. Looks like second and nine here for Upper Murray. Absolutely nowhere to go for the running back there. Eagles stepping it up a little bit. And if we can get them into a third and long situation, make them think about what plays are in their playbook that they don't want to call in this type of weather. Wonder if Hussein is going to dial up a blitz or two. He had one going in the uh, last series. Unfortunately, Marion saw it, picked it up, and ran in for a touchdown. The handoff again goes to Savage, and nowhere to go. Looks like they're starting to bottle him up. Third and long for the Vikings. Well, one thing that this team has worked a lot on, even just in camp, uh, informal and formally, making sure that they, they're not just working on the athletic part of the game, but you know the, the, the mental part of the game. So the players recognizing, seeing the same thing over and over and altering what they're doing a little bit, winning some of the battles inside now that we weren't seeing them win in the prior series. It's gonna be third down and nine for Upper Marion. Backs in the eye. The handoff again goes to Savage, and the Eagles were ready for it. Short pickup, and it's going to be fourth down. Savage is going to go home exhausted tonight, Dave. He is getting the ball every play here. He's getting the ball, exactly. He's getting the ball every play, and Upper Marion really hasn't had, they say variety is the spice of life, but for Marion's not that it doesn't seem to be subscribing to that strategy so far. It's been working, but the Eagles look like they're kind of picking up on it. Fourth yeah. down. A couple more series like that, and maybe they're going to be forced to change their hand a little bit. Punt is almost blocked. Gets a halfway decent bounce. It's going to be first and 10 from the 20 yard line for the Eagles with 134 left to go here in the first. <laughs> the rain continues to pour down here at the Battle of the Bridge. But we do have some fans out here who have come out to brave the weather and the cheerleaders still out there braving the weather, doing a great job trying to get the people who are here fired up in the midst of these kind of rainy, soggy conditions. And Dave, you're doing an excellent job braving the conditions as the water is blowing in through the window. The booth is becoming saturated here. First and 10 for the Eagles, Denalfi under center. There's the handoff and short game for number 22, Larry Hill. Boy, I'll tell you, that one arm tackle there, just catching him. He was close to getting a little daylight there. Very close to breaking away on that one. Uh, it looks like a pickup of three on that one. It's going to be second and seven for Norris. See if Milligan keeps it here on the ground. Not the under center. Hill back deep. Handoff goes to Hill, and that one goes nowhere. Upper Marion was waiting on it. It's going to bring up third and eight for the Eagles. Another third and long situation here and see. You know, do you keep the play before that where they almost had some daylight? Do you keep pounding it up the middle? And, you know, eventually, you know, the Eagles are too – they do have some strength up front, and they're also too quick. You're eventually going to break some runs here. There's no doubt about it, just a matter of when. 
You're going to get something as the quarter winds down. 16 seconds left in the quarter. Denalfi under center. Backs in the eye, third and eight. Oh, a little miscue there in the backfield. And Denalfi is sacked to end the first quarter here. Not the first quarter we wanted, but when you go through a first quarter where a lot of things didn't go the way you planned and you're behind by seven, you're okay. A lot of football left to be played. We're beginning the second quarter here at a very, very rainy, and the rain is actually at, the rain is intensifying here, and we talked before about trying to get some passing game in a little bit. I'm not, I don't know if that's gonna happen. Yeah, I, I think that's a stretch right now. Maybe there's a point in the game where the rain slows down a little bit, but you know, also by that time you're gonna have a, a lot of soggy players out there, you know, shaking it off. But it does wear on you as a player. I remember, and it was years ago when I played. I remember that we had a somewhat limited playbook. I mean, we had maybe 15 to 20 plays, and it was all about execution. You really don't need that many plays if the ones you have work. So. In a game like this, you're going to be relying on the basics. You're going to be relying on a few maybe counters, the sweeps, and mostly power up the middle. And the team that can do that best, and Upper Marion has been doing that best in the first quarter, the team that does that best in conditions like that, they're going to win. Dave, do you think we'll see a swing back from everybody trying to run spread offenses, you know, humongous playbooks, back more to the basics? I think so as, you know, football is kind of a, a cyclical game. Here's the punt by the Eagles. It's off. It's going to be, takes a Eagles bounce. Murray runs backwards, and that worked out well for the Eagles there as they put them as, you know, they made the best out of a bad situation right there. It wasn't the best punt, and looks like I'm trying to find a spot there. It looks like the Upper Marion Vikings are going to take it at about the 40 set. That was a little risky there by Aaron Anderson for the Vikings. I did not expect him to try to pick that ball up, not on a day like today. And back to your earlier question about whether or not I think football is going to come back from everybody running spread offenses. It, it used to be that kind of the, the high school game and the college game were very separate from the pro game. But I think that as football has become more specialized, and in all things, I mean, you see rules favored rules favoring the offense as these rules have come to favor the offense and these spread offenses have come to well more on that in a little bit as very very short game maybe a loss of one by upper marion good contact for you yeah that was a great stick up the middle there big number 59 sticking his helmet right in there you could hear that pop loud and clear in the press box It's going to be second and 10 for Upper Marion. Backs in the eye for Upper Marion. The handoff goes to number 30, 30 Sal Costello it looks like. Looks like Costello picks up about seven on that one. Well, we were saying earlier we weren't seeing a lot of variety coming out of the Vikings' backfield. Here with the uh, big back still coming through that right side of the line, though. The right guard, right tackle for the Vikings really playing well here early on. All right, pick up again by 33. Yeah, by, uh, We had Liam Smith sticking his helmet in there for the Eagles. Nice stick at the line of scrimmage. What do you think they dial up here fourth and short, Dave? They're sure they're going to go up the middle. I wonder if number four, Savage, is going to come in. We'll see if they bring him back in. Let's take a look. Handoff goes to number 33 again, who picks 
up the first down. And the Eagles bringing some heat there, trying to trying to get some push at the line and get, make some contact behind the line of scrimmage. And the problem when you start bringing a lot of people in is if you don't make that hit initially, you got a lot of running room and not a lot of defenders back there. So first down for Upper Murray. First down for Upper Marion, backs in the eye. Maybe picks up one or two with forward progress. Really awkward exchange there on the handoff, slowed him up in the backfield, giving the Eagles a chance to make some noise, drag him down in the backfield. Again, every time you see a tackle for the Eagles, one thing that we've seen time and time again so far in this first half is it's never just one guy on the tackle. Nobody's given up till the whistle blows. It's the mark of a good team. Second and nine here. Again, Eddie talked about the awkward exchanges from center. That's for, for both teams. Let's see what happens here on second down. Eagles pursuit. Upper Marion completes two. Upper Marion com completes the pass to number 20, and they pick up the first down. Well, so much for not being able to throw the ball. We've yeah. seen the quarterbacks here two for two on the on the day. If you ignore the fact that it's only two for two, it's 100%. That's 100% complete. I'm not a math major, but I no, got that one. Absolutely. First down for Upper Marion, driving again with 8.38 here to go in the first half. First and 10 for the Vikings. Player Savage back in, he picks up another about three or four yards. They're going back to him. So pick up about three. Liam Smith with a good series here for the Eagles. Been in on a number of tackles here, you see him able to Use his hands, get the defender off his body, and uh, lets him get to the ball carrier. Second and six here to go for Upper Marion with eight minutes, 20 seconds to go. And it looks like we got an injury timeout on the field. Looks like athletic trainer Dennis Flynn is out there to check on the injury. We'll see what we we'll see what we have here. Mr. Flynn checking him out. Looks like testing the see. Testing the see the knee there. Mr. Flynn, of course, the uh, backbone of the athletic department here. Really, he is an amazing resource to have a variety of experience at all kinds of levels. He worked with some really premier athletes, so. You know, if you're the parent of a Norristown Eagle or a future Norristown Eagle, no one else I'd rather have uh, working on my child if they're unfortunate enough to be injured. Mr. Flynn has been here a long time, and Mr. Flynn has worked for many Philadelphia area sports teams, including the Philadelphia Eagles. So as, Mr. you know, we are all kind of beneficiaries of his expertise. And, you know, I even, you know, even now when I, have, I find myself banged up and bruised from some ill-advised Weightlifting misadventure. I'll you know do what I'll do what I did when I played. Go see Flynn. I didn't know if that was going to be from weightlifting or if maybe you know, the chalk slips out of your hands. <laughs> you're trying to write in the classroom. Yep. An injury is an injury. An injury is an injury. Go see Flynn. Second and six for Upper Marion. Handoff goes to number four, and Savage picks up about maybe a half a yard, maybe about a yard. It'll be third and six for Upper Murray. Good stop there by the Eagles defense. Able to break through that right side of the Vikings line just a little bit. Third and six with seven minutes and 39 seconds here to go in the first half. Back in the eye. Drops back to pass, and it is picked off by the Eagles. Picked off by number 22, Larry Hill, making a great play. And the Eagles are going to 
get it back with 7.23 here to go in the first half. Well, we said when the first quarter ended that if you have a sloppy quarter and you're only down by a touchdown, you're in great shape. And it's plays like that one that Larry makes right there that really swing the momentum. And now hopefully the Eagles offense is able to come out and capitalize. We'll see what the Eagles do here. The rain looks like, I'm not going to say it's letting up all that much, but it's definitely, definitely not raining as hard as it was. You're a braver man than I. I wouldn't have said that. I think you jinxed it personally. We'll find out. Denolfi's under center. That handoff goes nowhere for the Eagles. Looks like number nine there, Haynes. Doesn't pick up much, but doesn't lose anything. So, you know, nothing ventured, nothing gained with second. Actually, does lose two on the play. Couldn't see the spot here from the booth. Yeah, loss of two. Well, the important thing here is make sure we get a little bit of room. You never like to be down inside of your own 10-yard line. Uh, but again, I think we're still waiting for just that one play, get some space, and uh, hopefully we can get a little bit of room here. Again, a lot of speed here for the Eagles, and it's just a matter of time before we get to see it on display. Second and 12, we'll see if Denolfi drops back to pass. Wow, they knew what was coming and Upper Marion was in there right away. Looks like, could tell, looks like number 50 made that play in the backfield for the Vikings. Slocum, it's gonna be a loss of a couple for the Eagles. Yeah, that's one Third of those long. plays where you, you almost wonder if Slocum was in the Eagles huddle there. He, <laughs> he, he was in the backfield before that play started. He was in the, back, he was in the backfield before Denalfi got the snap. That's where you don't want to become predictable in your snap count. And that's where you want to kind of change it up to be able to say, you know, keep them on their toes, maybe get a penalty. Yeah, so much of you know, football and really all sports, it's, it's routine. And if you allow the defense to get into a routine, things like that can happen. But again, I'm sure the coaches are uh, much more aware of that than I am, and they'll take care of that issue as we go along. Delay of game. Looks like that's going to push the Eagles back a couple yards. It's going to be third and really long. Five minutes, 40 seconds here to go in the first half. You're watching NASD TV. I'm Dave Pizzini along with Ed Roth. We are bringing you the Battle of the Bridge, and we, we, we have a crowd now. Some people have chosen to come out and brave the elements. There's one thing we know about Town. It's that whether they are uh, keeping track online on on social media or they are here in the stands everybody's very interested in what happens with this eagles team again coach milligan bringing a lot of excitement third and really long here for the eagles but it looks like upper marion may have jumped we will see whether or not they were drawn off but that goes back to what we we're talking about with the snap count the eagles may have drawn them off by varying up the snap. <laughs> Okay, well, none of what I just said was true. <laughs> it looks like a false start against the Eagles. The Upper Marion, they were pointing. A lot of times when the defense does that, they're up, they get up to all sorts of shenanigans and they're pointing over there. It's like they're not taking the blame for something that they in fact did, but Dave, that wasn't true here. Personally, I think that you were right. I, I'm, I'm gonna go with you. I, you would never steer us wrong. I thought I was right. <laughs> Third and a long way to go. Yeah, they got you got a couple to get some breathing room for the punt. We'll see how that works out. It's going to be fourth and about 15. The Eagles are going to punt. Really in that situation, not a whole lot you can do. Not a bad idea there. Let Denalfi uh, get them some yards, give the punter a little bit of room, and let's try and change this field position just a bit. Deep in the end zone, will Uncle Marion get aggressive on this? They almost got it. That is a very short punt. It's going to put Upper Marion in great field position. It looks like they're right at 
the 30-yard line. So Upper Marion has extremely advantageous field, field position here. 4.48 to go here in the first half. Tough spot for any punter, especially early in a high school season. You know that you, you know that you're going to face a little bit of pressure. You know that you don't have as you're not able to get back as deep as you want to be. So not where we wanted to be after that punt, but hey, we're out to the 30-yard line. Defense has been playing rather well the last few series. So uh, you know if we can get a stop and again and give our offense the opportunity to make something happen. One of the changes that I have seen in football is special teams used to be the thing that you practiced like almost as an afterthought. But now, I see high school, colleges, and in the pros, they emphasize that because that really can change the game. First down for Upper Murray, and the handoff goes to number four, Savage, who goes nowhere. Loss of two on the play. Eagles really stepping it up there. That right side of the Vikings line that was dominating early on, the Eagles are able to get guys in there play after play now. Great defense there by the Eagles, identifying and kind of snuffing that out before it got started. It's going to be second and 12 for Upper Marion with 423 here to go in first. You know what I like there? I think that was Santos who got in the hole. and He got in the hole and he plugged it. You know, he wasn't too aggressive. He didn't run past it. A lot of times younger players will be a little too aggressive and run upfield right past the play. Savage gets plenty of room here. Great run, exploiting a hole in the defense. Picks up a big first down with a great run right up the middle. Kevin Hayward really saving a touchdown there. Nice open field tackle. Not what you want to see happen, but when you got one guy left and he brings him down, he's giving the Eagles a chance to make a stand here, but we are starting to run out of room on the Nars down end of the field. Disaster averted, but as you, as you said, it was a great, great open field tackle. First and 10 for the Vikings. Fumble. Loose ball, quarterback falls on top of it. And again, we've seen time and again that quarterback center exchange just gone awry. You know, something that's interesting about this game, even though the Eagles have obviously had a coaching change, you have two teams that played each other twice last year. It doesn't happen a whole lot, especially not in high school, so there's a lot of familiarity out on that field. These two teams are very, very familiar with each other. And we'll see. Second and 11. Handoff goes to Savage, who picks up nothing. Picks up the original line of scrimmage. Picks up, yeah, about a half a yard. Great stop there by that Eagles D. Again, I think that was Vermeer Wiggins there uh, with the stop. But again, he's never alone. Uh, a lot of great backside pursuit. Guys sliding down the line uh, on those off-tackle runs. Third down and 11 here to go for Upper Marion with two minutes, 48 seconds to go in the first half. Handoff goes to number four, Savage, who picks up about two or three, but that brings up fourth down for Upper Marion. Now this brings up an interesting question. Do you kick a field goal in a high school game on a rainy day? That is always a risky proposition, and I'm going to remind you that extra point squeaked over the bar by about four inches. Yeah, by about four inches. And as I say that, they line up for the field goal. Here we go. Always an adventure in the high school game. The kick is up, and the kick is good! So Dave, like I said, if I were the coach there, I would have no doubt that my kicker would put it through the uprights. <laughs> I've seen a lot of high school football. I did a lot of high school games. And I think that the percentage of field goals made that I've seen is in the 30s. It's always, always an adventure. Especially, especially in these adverse weather conditions. It's one of the things that's kind of cool about high school football though, right? If you're watching an NFL game and somebody lines up for a 50-yard field goal, you almost stop paying attention because right. it's automatic. In the high school game, an extra point is an adventure. It's, it's always, it's always must-see TV. Murray's going to kick off here with a minute 56 left to go in the first half. Vikings are up 10 up. You 
Yeah, Davis, I watched Coach Lusane down there. I, I can't help but think he really just wants to put the pads on one more time. <laughs> I have a lot of great stories about Coach Lusane as a player. And let's just put it like this. He, the word is enthusiasm. And we had this saying when we played, you know, the coach, the coach Roger Grove, he always said, push the button. And we, he would say, push the button in order to achieve intensity. Like all problems in the world could be solved by pushing the button to achieve intensity. When you look at Coach Rara Lusain, like his name Rara, you got that for a reason. He is Mr. Intensity, Mr. Enthusiasm, and watching him with these players, he brings them to life and gets them fired up in a way that, like, it's like all inspiring to watch because he is just Mr. Intensity. Yeah, he had me fired up at the pep rally last night. He, just, yeah, he was screaming he just, and yelling into the microphone. I went home, I couldn't sleep. <laughs> he just goes. First and 10 for the Eagles. Minute 53 to go here in the first half. Then off he lines up in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Then off he takes off. He's got room to run. And Denalfi gets out of bounds. Great pickup, 15 yards. Scramble there by Denalfi. Wasn't planned, but hey, it worked. I'll tell you, I thought they had him dead to rights. Two guys in the backfield real quick, and he just had the instincts. That's, that's something that separates a, a good athlete from a great athlete is the instincts. He had it, pulled it down, and then once he made his decision, he was 100% to get as many yards as he could. Yeah, he knew he had to go, and he picked up a strong 15 right there and got out of bounds. With minute 45 here to go in the first half. Rain's coming down again really hard. I spoke far too soon. Handoff goes to number 43, Curtis Sloan, who picks up about, about a yard. Big number 55 there for the Vikings. It's Christian. Oh, Christian Ghanayam. I apologize, Christian, if I messed that up a little bit. But uh, great play there. Minute 20 here to go to Norriston Area High School Athletic Complex. Second and nine for the Eagles. The clock is running, so time is a factor here as the Eagles are just over midfield. Good pass by Denalfi, except I'd have gone out of bounds on that one. He tried to pick up another couple yards, and time is a factor, should have gone out of bounds. Yeah, you know, Thomas with those playmaking instincts, he wants to turn and find some field. You know, he knows he wants to get this evened up. By, or, well, he can't get it evened up, but he wants to put some points on the board. But yeah, you got to take the safe play there and step out. Eagles take a timeout here. 36 seconds here to go in the first half. Are we at 36 Third seconds? down and five. Are we at 36 seconds? Yep. This has been a fast moving first half. Not too many clock stoppages. And the Eagles probably should have called that timeout a little bit sooner. There's a funny thing about a game in a pouring rain. The referees tend not to see as many penalties. So the game moves just a little bit faster. That's a great point. Because there's some games on a beautiful sunny, beautiful sunny day when you might get 15 holding calls in three series. However, to your point, there has been exactly one penalty called so far. Yeah, I'm willing to bet that across District One tonight, there's probably only been about 12 penalties called. Um, maybe. I'd take the under on that, by the way. And of course, we would never second guess the men in stripes. Absolutely not. However, in, as in all things this evening. Weather may be a factor. Thirty-six seconds here to go in the half. Norris down as the ball at the forty-four yard line. Eagles have one timeout remaining, I believe. And off he takes the snap. Denofi runs off tackle, picks up not much on the play, maybe a yard or two. 
another timeout. Perhaps the, the second Eagles timeout here with 27 seconds to go in the half. I'll tell you what, he's got a lot of speed around that corner. I wonder if that's something we don't see a lot more in the second half. The formation, Milligan seems like the, the pistol formation here, Milligan seems to have kind of centered on that. You're not seeing as much in the eye formation. And certainly, the, the clock is a factor. So as you said, I think we're going to see a lot more Denalfi around the end in the second half. You know what, why keep doing the traditional snap under center uh, with the conditions? We've seen a lot of bobble snaps both sides. The pistols work and stick with it. Milligan calls the guys together. 27 seconds to go. Norristown Area High School Athletic Complex. I'm Dave Pizzini here along with Ed Roth bringing you the Battle of the Bridge. And we're here on this rainy, rainy kind of evening afternoon here. Very overcast, although overcast is a bit of an understatement. <laughs> <laughs> just a bit, Dave, just, just, just a, a bit. bit of an understatement. Yeah, a little a little damp, as I said before in the intro. Well, I'll tell you what, I was over at Upper Marion for the other games earlier today. Great day. Their camp is full of games between these two teams, and uh, the weather did not dampen the spirits of any of the student athletes. Fourth down, three here to go. Eagles varying up the snap count. Do not succeed in drawing Upper Marion off. Oh! Incomplete. The clock is still running, but there's an incomplete pass. 21 seconds here to go. Should be about three or four seconds, maybe five seconds added back on. But there was an incomplete pass. Shame. Nice, uh, nice toss there by Denofi. Again, a uh, snap was, uh, you know, not perfect. Yep. Slowed him up a little bit, but he got it out into his hands again behind him a little bit. Can't completely blame the receiver there. But as you said, the Vikings going to take over. Under 30 seconds left in the half. I don't know if we even see another play here. I don't know. Vikings might take a knee here. 10 nothing. The Vikings are up 10 nothing here with 21 seconds to go in the half. Yeah, I would think so. It looks like they're planning on calling some plays. <laughs> Pretty much anything we predict is going to not happen. And looks like Savage breaks a long run. Upper Marion, Upper Marion calls a timeout with 16 seconds here to go. Haynes with the tackle, but way too much yardage there. And on a play where even though they didn't kneel, they're probably just looking to give it up inside. They're probably looking to run out the clock, but they unexpectedly picked up that bonus. And now, they could conceivably score before the half ends. Just saying, it's a 56-yard field goal from right here, Dave. That's that's a long one. Um, I don't know that I've ever seen a high school. I don't know that I've ever seen a high school punt go 56 yards. So, uh, funny story for you. I was once I was driving up to Penn State. Uh, and I was listening to the Eagles game, and you know, I lost the channel. I was trying to find it. I thought I found it because I heard the announcer doing play by play live say, and here we go, the 30, I want to say nine yard field goal attempt. The kick was up, it was good. It was not the Eagles, it was not college football, it was not high school football. Well, it was high school football, but it was powder puff football. So, somewhere in the state of Pennsylvania, a powder puff football player kicked a 30 something yard field goal. like 15 years ago, obviously a very big memory for me. <laughs> the handoff, this fools no one, and that's going to be a loss. And another timeout for Upper Marion. Ten seconds here to go. Great play by Christian Thomas, breaking right on through, deep into the Vikings' backfield. Second and long here for Upper Marion. Thomas set a, a pretty solid first half here. He's been involved in a number of plays. Dave, if, uh, I don't know if you can see through the rain, but the orange fencing that you see up around the field 
really excited to uh, get some permanent seating over on the visitor side of this stadium, double our capacity for seating. Uh, so as this football team really takes off, and not just football, all of our sports, we're really going to have the ability to pack the house here, uh, making this stadium, you know, getting closer to fulfilling the dream. And this brings back memories of the old Roosevelt Field. Roosevelt Field had a capacity of, you know, capacity of 10,000. It was one of those old school concrete stadiums. And it would be great to see something like that here, bringing back the days of kind of the, the full packed house. And that just brought, that just brought like such a, a great atmosphere to the game, screaming fans. A great time. Second and long here for Vikings with 10 seconds to go in the half. Handoff goes to Savage and looks like there is a flag on the play. Four seconds to go. That was a great open field great open tackle. Field tackle. And with four seconds to go in the half, we see the yellow flag come out. Second penalty of the half. See what the call is here. Point four three, right? Yep. It is going to be holding on oh, Upper Marion, bringing them back ten yards. And I don't want to make this prediction here, but pretty much the possibility of more points is uh, a little bit less than it was. Folks, that was Dave Fazzini with that uh, yeah, prediction. Bold prediction here. But as we said, every one of the predictions we made was wrong. There, there you go. We, we, well, there we go. One. I was right. I never doubted you. And for some reason, the clock just ran out. <laughs> I, I thought that the clock was stopped, but I guess not. So there it is. <laughs> the, the rules are flexible. Very flexible. And that brings to the close. The first half here at the North Area High School Athletic Complex. Dave Zing along with Ed Roth. Score is 10-0 Upper Marion. And we will be back very shortly with a second. All right, here we go here. Just about to kick off NASDTV. Kickoff for the Vikings, number 15, Nicholas Lindelow kicks it off. To, oh, the tackle's a bit high. Big hit in the pros. They might have called a penalty on that one. Yeah, that that, that that'd probably get you a little fine uh, if you're playing on Sunday. <laughs> Kevin Chandler just uh, laid down the wall on that kickoff. Oh, Larry Hill took the hit. He comes back up. He gets right back up, but... Man, oh, man, that was a big open field tackle. And as you said, if you're playing on Sunday, you might you might see a little bit of a fine. Yeah, Larry, to his credit, was completely unfazed, popped right up. He was good, or at least uh, made it appear that way. Great open field tackle. First and ten for the Eagles. Denolfi in the pistol formation. Looks like the Eagles are going to run it that way from here on out, but we'll see. I've been wrong before this game. Denolfi back to pass. Gets the pass off. Number 13, Christian Thomas, was open, but just could not bring it down, and I'm imagining weather is a factor in that. Yeah, I think so, but you know what? That was our first real downfield passing attempt. The weather is considerably better than it was when the game started, and I think it's an encouraging sign to see the Eagles feel like they can open up the playbook yep. a little bit because it's going to put the defense on their you know on their on their heels a little bit denofi's got a good arm but the weather so far has not allowed him to open it up and put it downfield so second and ten here to go we'll see second and ten here for norristown still in the pistol formation the quarterback center exchanges have gone much smoother since they've pretty much gone to that but it looks like the eagles jumped No, it's going to be against Upper Marion. It's going to bring up second and five for Norris down. It benefits benefits the Eagles here. All right, so free five yards for the Eagles, and uh, see what Denolfi can do here in this opening series of the second half. 
See if they still stay in the pistol formation. Second and five for Norristown. Two wide receivers to the near side. Two backs. There is the handoff. Big hit by Upper Marion. Looks like number 52, Mark Piccarello, makes a big hit in the backfield. And that takes a little bit of the wind out of the Eagle Sales. is going to bring up third and seven for Norris down with 11.33 here to go in the first half. Ed, that was a big hit. Boy, it is one thing to get stuck at the line of scrimmage. It is another thing to be decleated. That, that, was, that was definitely a decleating. Wow, two big hits for Upper Marion here in the early part of the first half. Third and seven for the Eagles. Eagles down 10 nothing. We'll see. Varying the snap count. Denalfi takes it, rolls out to the near side. Denalfi does keep it, runs out of bounds. He's going to be close to the first. Let's see where they spot him. Looks like two yards short of the first down. So Denalfi comes up just a bit short, bringing up fourth and very short for the Eagles. Uh, something we saw uh, a few times at the end of the first half, Denalfi tucking the ball running, sometimes by design, sometimes not. Uh, but clearly he, he is feeling the energy as a playmaker. And, uh, again, those are the kind of things that take the – consistency away from the defense you can't just keep doing the same old thing can't just rethink things can't just tee off on them as you said they keep them on their toes Denalfi is a really good athlete um, but we're going to see what we're doing here on fourth and two the Eagles are definitely going for it probably going to try to draw the Vikings off sides but <coughs> we'll see what Milligan has dialed up False start by the Eagles. That's going to kind of force their hand a little bit, putting them in a fourth and seven. They don't want to see that. No, you know, these are the things that early on in the season, you, you really got to iron these out. Um, you know, these these mistakes, They the Vikings gave us five yards earlier. Now we're going to give those five yards back. Definitely an unfortunate turn of events here. Know the snap count. Stay at home. Make them make the mistakes. The Eagles had drawn them off before. But the Eagles back to punt now, kind of forced to back to punt. Fourth and seven. The punt is up. Good punt. Eagles stop it, stop it. There we go. It's going to be picked up at the 37-yard line. Call it the 37. Santos downs it, and it's going to be first and 10 for Upper Marion. All right, good, clean special teams play there. And now the Eagles defense back on the field. You know, all in all, the Eagles defense in that first half really played pretty well. Eagles defense played very well. That one long run by Zaire Savage and the field goal that I thought was impossible given the weather circumstances, I, you know, I was just wrong, flat out wrong. But other than those two plays and a couple strong runs by, by Zaire Savage, the Eagles would it'd still be a 0-0 game. Yeah, and you saw uh, saw the coaches make some adjustments during the course of that first half. The things that worked early in the first few drives of the first quarter uh, were not working as well uh, down the stretch. First and ten for Upper Marion. I don't know what this is. Is that a timeout? Did they take a timeout for a substitution? I don't know what just happened. I really don't know. I do think we could probably make something up because I don't know if the viewers are going to know either. I have no idea. Nice hit there by number nine, Zaire Haynes. Short pickup. Looks like a pickup of about three, maybe four on the play. Eagles defense has been, as you said, <coughs> has been consistent. Like I said, and it weren't for those couple plays, but those couple plays did happen, and Arstown finds himself down 10 nothing. I think the key, you know, anytime you fall behind really early on, you want to make sure that you keep the game close. The defense has done that. Had that big play with the interception in the end zone in the first half. You know, that really is the difference uh, here with a lot of optimism coming into the second half. Nice tackle in the backfield. Looks like number 13, Christian Thomas, making the play in the backfield, bringing Zaire Savage down. Upper Marion's insistence on going back to the run. Seems to have backfired here in the early part of the second half. 
Yeah, and that was that left side of that Vikings line that was really dominant early on, and the Eagles showing that uh, whether it's scheming or just you know the player's ability to you know feel their opponent out a little bit and fill those gaps, not seeing the push on that left side of the line like we saw earlier. We were ending the first half by discussing the intensity of defensive coordinator Rara Lusain. I wonder what he said to them at halftime. Third down for the Vikings. Back to pass. He's got a man, but just a bit overthrown. He was intended receiver was number 20. He had him open. He had him open in the flat, but it's going to bring up fourth and seven for the Vikings. He did have him open. I'll tell you what, you know, on a play like that, it's easy to look and say, like, oh, you know, well, he was open. But you still got to credit the defense because that play only happened because they made the stand earlier on. You know, if they were still running the ball like they were earlier in the game, right. then that play is not even being called at that point. Right. If Zaire Savage had been able to break those long runs, if, if it had been third and two, yeah, it would be a little bit different. Vikings back to punt. Snap is high. This one you want to stay away from. Takes a bit of a Viking roll. It's going to bring it up to the 29-yard line where the Eagles are going to take over. Good defensive stand there by the Eagles. And now it's Denolfi and the Eagles offense back on the field looking to make something happen. We'll see if they get Larry Hill back involved here in the running game. Eagles really haven't been able to get the running game established so much here in the first half. We'll see if they can get it rolling in the second. You think now the weather temporarily is not bad, you know, light rain. You think we see more passing here as the game goes along? I think we do. Uh, they gave some sort of some indication that they were going to go out and uh, try to get the ball downfield with Denalfi. <coughs> We'll see what they do, but there's an illegal procedure call, it sounds like, against the Eagles. I'm not even sure how that could have been, but there was a penalty called. It was against the Eagles, and that pushes them back a couple yards. Yeah, I won't lie, Dave. I did not see what the call was there. It looked like the most routine punt and down of a punt I've ever seen. I, yeah. It was an illegal block on the play. I didn't see that indicated. I wonder if it was up on that far side of the field. Denofi back to pass. Has Thomas in the flat. Pickup of about, about eight yards on the play. They're not doing much on the ground, so the Denofi, uh, Denofi's taken to the air. Yeah, nice job by Thomas there. You know, he had that ball go through his hands earlier, so nice to see him come back, get that ball. You know, his stats read like a read like a guy who's playing on Sunday. 6'4", 215, great size for a wide receiver. Second and short for the Eagles. Great play fake by Denalfi. Upper Marion wasn't biting, though. Short pickup there by Hill. Pickup of one. It's going to be third and a long one. It says two on the board, but I'm saying it's going to be third and a and a long one for an R's down. You know, Dave, I'm going to I'm going to call it one and a half. One and a half to one point seven five. However, given the Eagles' struggles on the ground in the game so far. I wonder if Denalfi's just going to keep this one or if they're going to go to the air. Back to Thomas. It looks like Upper Marion's going to bring some heat here. Ball gets away from Denalfi. This could be disaster. There were a lot. There were a lot of Vikings, and Upper Marion does come up with it putting them in amazing field position. We had been talking earlier, Ed, about the quarterback center exchange on both sides. Weather has been a factor. And, yeah, you're playing on turf, so that takes some of the slipping and sliding out of it as far as, like, running backs and receivers making their cuts. But it does nothing to kind of mitigate the quarterback center exchange and the slippery football. And that's bitten the Eagles yet again here. 
especially a situation like that. You know, you only need short yardage, but you see that the, the Vikings were, in fact, going to bring a lot of pressure. You know, you only have a little bit of time, and that maybe that factored into what happened there. Great tackle in the backfield. Maybe picks up about a yard by number 33, Santos. Makes the tackle. He's been very active here in the game. He's made about four or five tackles so far, getting great penetration. Uh, but Savage did at the end of the run pick up a couple. I'd say Santos, big, strong kid, man. He Once he gets you in his arms, you're, you're just not getting out. Second and seven here for the Vikings. Backs in the eye. So I hear Savage back deep. Looks like Savage gets the call again. Gets about one. Good defense again by the Eagles. Well, this Eagles defense, which has been playing well, put in a really tough spot here. And uh, if they can pull off a couple more plays here, Dave, I'll tell you what, this could be a real momentum swing. And that's that's kind of been the story of the game. The defense has been playing well. It's just that they've been put in some rather disadvantageous field position. They haven't won the field position game here so far. No, but you know what? If you're if you're on the upper Marion side of things, this is where you you either have to put the game away yeah. or you, you let it stay like this, and eventually Norristown's going to make something happen. Third and six here for the Vikings. Backs in the eye. It's a pass. Under pressure. Got nothing. And that's going to bring up fourth down. Should I make another brazenly inaccurate field goal prediction? I mean, why not, Dave? That's what everybody's waiting for. All right, here we go. <laughs> As I said before, the percentage of high school field goals I've made, I've, like the percentage of high school field goals I've seen made is in the 30s or 40s. Uh, but Upper Marion made one earlier. So we'll see what they do here The fourth and six. They are bringing out the field goal team in these rainy conditions. Got a 25-yard try here. This is uh, not overly long, but high school standards, this is a tough one. Let's see what happens. Especially in the rain. Spot is down. Kick is up. And the kick is no good. The kick is wide left. So, there we go. I mean, always an adventure. Always, always. I, it's, uh, you know, again, NFL game, you're probably getting up to go refill your iced tea at that yeah, point. The, it's, it's funny how... It is so routine in college and the pros, but in the high school game, special teams just tends to be one of those, you know, must-see TV. you got to tune in because there's about a 50% chance the kicker's not going to make it. Well, and you especially have to tune in when you have predictions by Dave Pizzini. Well, yeah, and uh, half of them are, are right. <laughs> They're the only ones that we will remember. Well, the only ones that show up on replay, that is. Six minutes, ten seconds here to go in the third quarter. You're watching NASD TV. I'm Dave Fazzini along with Ed Roth, bringing you the Battle of the Bridge, Upper Marion, currently up 10 nothing. But Norristown just caught a break, missed field goal. Pickup of three on the play. They brought in. Daniel Watson's now under center. Daniel Watson coming back in, taking a, getting the call from Coach Milligan. As, uh, Let's see Curtis. what happens. Sorry, Dave. Curtis Sloan with a nice hard run there. And uh, interesting to see how the offense changes with Watson under center. Let's see about the formation. Still staying in the same formation. Watson back still in the still taking a snap. Drops back to throw. That slipped out of his hand. You can see that from up here. And that's the that's the problem with throwing in weather conditions like this. Yeah, and I'll, I'll tell you what, Danny is uh you ever see Danny face to face, he is a strong kid. Uh, you're not gonna see a ball slip out of those hands no, very so, often. Yeah, that's that's a that's definitely a situation where the weather was a factor. Danny had some success in the second half of the Eagles game last week. I believe he had a touchdown toss in that game. Second and 
Going to bring up third and about seven here for the Eagles. Five twenty to go. Watson takes a snap. Watson rolls. There, bit overthrown. It's going to bring up fourth down. Throwing into a lot of coverage there. They were all over him over there in that far side line. Definitely throwing into a lot of coverage. It's going to bring up fourth and seven. And the field position, the battle of field position, it's not working out. So if they punt, which looks like they're going to do, they got to get off a good one. Snap is good. Punt is up. Decent punt. Does not take a north down bounce. Bounces pretty much nowhere, though. Doesn't take an upper Marion bounce. Upper Marion will take it over at the 48, and that's a lot better than I thought it was going to be. Yeah, not a, not a bad punt at all. Uh, the, the line on these punts, you know, there was a lot of pressure on the kicks earlier in the game. A little bit more room now. Able to settle in, get it at least, uh, even by just by a yard, but get it onto the upper Marion side of the field. Neither offense has been able to really get all that much done. Um, the defenses have been playing well, um, making some good open field tackles. In Upper Marion is going to take over here. First and 10. Looks like they spotted it at the 49. 5-11 to go here in the third quarter. Backs in the eye. Handoff goes to Zaire Savage, who hasn't been doing much recently, but he does pick up about nine, maybe ten, even to be just shy of the first down. Nice run there. Good blocking up front by Upper Marion. Yeah, they definitely dominated the line on that play. And, you know, that was first time in a while. Once he got into that second level, he was able to break some tackles and power through. Official timeout. Looks like they're, no, they're not going to do an official timeout. And again... Are they calling an official? What is happening? Yeah, again, I think that's one of those things where when it's raining, you're not likely to see a measurement. No. No. There's too much rain to measure. All right. They call for the clock to run. Second and very short. There we go. And there we go. That's the number we've been calling all game. Santos makes a great tackle in the backfield, and they knew what was coming. Yeah, Santos uh, continues to play really well. Had a little help there from big number 59 on the far side. And, uh, yeah, just a great stick, a big play. Now we get a third down. Third down here at the 43. I'm going to bring up third three, 419 left to go in the third quarter. The handoff again goes to Zaire Savage. They're going to, looks like they're going to measure on this one. It's going to be very close. He may have gotten it. They do. He, Savage picks up the first down. It's going to bring up first and 10 for Upper Marion from the 41. Earlier today in the Battle of the Bridge, the boys soccer team with a nice win today against Upper Marion. They've got some great numbers out for that team. Played really well today. And uh, I think that this is certainly not going to be the only football that's exciting at Norristown. Uh, boys soccer is, is going to give us a lot to, to be interested in this year. First and 10 for Upper Marion. Looks like number 33. Makes a great run. About, picks up about eight or nine yards on the play. Bring up second and very short for Upper Marion. Yeah, Hayward again having to make that tackle way back in the defensive backfield. You know, when you're giving up nine yards on first uh, first down, it's going to open up the Vikings' playbook as much as they want to open it up here. 
There's a timeout on the field. Looks like there's an injury for the Eagles, and Dennis Flynn is coming back out. New school year starting up in Norristown on Tuesday. Are we ready to go? I uh, can't wait. I'll tell you, we had freshman orientation last week, as you know, and uh, we got – you know, about 500 new kids coming into the building, and we most of them were there. You know, their last day of the summer, and uh, a lot of optimism. I think the, the staff is definitely ready. The kids are ready, and I can't wait to get the upperclassmen back in the building. A lot of student leaders giving giving tours. I was giving some of the we were giving some of the freshmen some of the tours around the building. We had a lot of great student leaders from UDOT helping out, and uh, another it was just fantastic to see and some of the upperclassmen coming in and talking to them, kind of helping to mitigate some of the freshman anxiety as they're coming in looking around seeing the seeing the big building and not quite know where not quite knowing where to go the uh it's great to see a lot of the seniors helping out oh i'll tell you what a year ago i was just starting here and it was those students the were, they were, they were, they were telling were me where to go so. yeah the kids that are part of you know things like the blue and white society and jrotc national honor society unidad uh, you know th there's there's a lot of leadership here in, in a variety of different ways and orientation was definitely a great way to see that so no one got you with oh you know mr roth uh, your, your office is on the fourth floor yeah, it was, it, was, it was Mr. Schaefer trying to tell me Schaefer that. got hit with that one. Another handoff for Upper, Mar or Upper Marion. Looks like they're going to pick that one up. Nice surge up the middle. First down for Upper Marion. That Vikings offensive line kind of reasserting themselves just a bit here, uh, a little bit like they were in the beginning of the game. First down for the Vikings, and we are, looks like we're at the 30. It's a little difficult to see. Here we go. We are at the 30-yard line. Upper Marion's ready to go. 2.31 here to go in the third quarter. Handoff goes to Zaire Savage, who picks up about eight on the carry. Nice run. Nice surge up the middle. And, Ed, I don't like to say this, but it looks like Upper Marion's run game has made a resurgence. Yeah, and I think, you know, at a certain point, the, the defense has been on the field a lot. Uh, you know, we, we really haven't had any sustained drives offensively, and that definitely wears on these yep. guys. Yeah, even though the weather is not as hot as it's been, and I was dreading the prospect because there's been a heat wave, and I was dreading the, process, the prospect of a 95-degree game. But... It's still warm, it's still humid, and the conditions are definitely, it's not just the rain, it's a factor. No, let's not forget they practiced in that they heat all week. They practiced in the heat all week. So that takes a toll on you even when it cools off on game day. Second and short for Upper Marion are going to the air. Dupper, Clayton is going deep, and touchdown, Upper Marion. But I see a yellow flag on the field. We'll see what this call is all about. I don't know it about is you, against Dave. Against Upper Marion, illegal receiver downfield. Oh boy, the Eagles called a break on that one. I don't know about you. I think it's an excellent call. Clearly, <laughs> bringing that back out of the, the end fourth zone. penalty of the game, and this one, this one is a big one for the Eagles. Man, the Eagles called a break there. Number 14, Dale Clayton, was wide open. Yeah, they kind of lulled us to sleep there a little bit, just keep pounding and pounding and pounding in that play action. Yep. Uh, good play call, but doesn't matter. It's third and eight. Doesn't matter. Zaire Savage, he takes the snap direct in the kind of the wildcat formation. I haven't seen that much recently. They used to be like they used to be all the rage, like ten years ago, and just haven't seen it much. And they just, they went with it, pick up a couple yards, but ultimately fourth down. And I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that they're not going to kick this one. Well, we will see. I, see, I'm smart. I'm not going to make a prediction here, but I will say I think at some point we need to get a sponsorship for these uh, predictions by Vizzini. Well, looks like this one's right on which is good. 
My predictions is over 50% now. The s it's ooh, we're close here. It looks like Upper Marion picks up the first. Some good old fashioned give it to your back, clear a hole, lower the shoulder. Yep. 33 seconds here to go in the third quarter. Upper Marion is in great shape. Upper Marion's on the 20-yard line with 20 seconds to go here in the quarter. Wonder if they're just going to let it run down. Or... Looks like they do. No, they're not. Vikings are at least going to go up to the line and make a showing of getting the playoff. They do. They run the play. There is a penalty. We'll see what they call. It looks like it's going to be waiting for the call. Yes, there's an illegal shift on Upper Marion. Coming back five yards. Dave, you really have to wonder. You rush up to the line with eight seconds to go there. And, uh, you know, when you're in a rush, things like that are going to happen. And there was no need to do that. No, now with 2.9 seconds here to go in the quarter, it's going to be first and 15 for Upper Marion. The clock runs out here to, in the third quarter. Bringing up the fourth quarter, we're going to pause for a brief second. I'm Dave Fazzini, along with Ed Roth. You're watching NASD TV, the Battle of the Bridge. And now it looks at as if there's more, a lot more of a crowd. So the crowd is coming out. Looks like we have some, we certainly have a lot of umbrellas up, but the crowd is coming out and uh, supporting the Eagles. No, I give the fans a lot of credit. You know, a lot of dedicated, uh, obviously, parents and parents, community members, uh, people definitely showing some interest. Got some staff members here. So uh, nice to see the fan, you know, the, the stands filling up just a little bit here on what is a pretty miserable start to your Labor Day weekend. Ladies and gentlemen, please remember to check out NASD TV on Twitter. Check out NASD TV on Instagram. Check out Mr. Roth's Twitter, Principal Roth. Twitter. You want to give a plug for any of the other uh, kind of the social media sites and great ways to be able to check out, see what's going on here at Norristown Area High School. In addition to NASD TV and the YouTube archives, where there's there's so many games and so much content for all of the different things and all of the great stuff we do here at Norristown. Watch all of the games, all the way back to I'm being told 1979. I'll tell you what, not just uh, not just the high school, but every school in the district really with an increasing presence on social media. Great way to stay connected. Even if you don't have kids in the elementary and the middle schools anymore, you want to stay tuned in and see the great things that are happening there because, of course, those kids, they are our future up here at the high school. And then we've got a lot of sports teams and coaches and, uh, you know, departments, you know, the, the art department at the high school with a strong presence online. So, yeah, you definitely want to tune in. And so with second down and 16 or 17 here in the fourth quarter. Yeah, you try and turn it around that edge there, and there was just nothing going. We haven't really seen that much from the Vikings. They've had so much success between the tackles. Uh, but giving it a shot, nothing doing. Second and 16 for Upper Marion. 11.26 here to go in the fourth quarter. Norristown's going to need to get this ball back and get something going. Backs in the eye. Picks up a couple, maybe two or three. Yeah, nice play there. I think that's Isaiah Tucker stringing that out to the sideline, getting his hands on the QB. Good coverage downfield. Uh, nowhere to really throw the ball. And here we go, third and long, Dave. Third and long. Do they go to the air in this one? Third and well, you know, you got 11 minutes left if you're the Vikings. Uh, you know, really, you're up by two scores. I don't know. Maybe I'd keep the ball on the ground here. They've had some success. They don't necessarily need to get a first down. Even if they get it close, who knows? Maybe they, they give you another field goal prediction. And the shotgun.
Trying to draw the Eagles off sides. Takes the snap, drops back, throwing deep. Kind of dangerous. Had definitely, definitely had some pressure. Boy, I'll tell you what, Christian Thomas just lit up Dale Clayton as he released that ball. He was untouched coming into backfield, and that ball was thrown nowhere because he had no time. 11.01 here to go in the fourth. In addition to YouTube and the YouTube archives, we also have NASD TV in Espanol and the NASD TV News. That NASD and Espanol on Twitter, a lot of great, not just resources for the Norristown School District, but a lot of resources uh, for our uh, Spanish-speaking community. The field goal is almost blocked, and it is short. And now, now, the percentage of high school field goals I've ever seen completed is back to where it exists at, like, 30%. Yeah, the law of averages, Dave. The law of averages. <laughs> <laughs> I'll tell you, I don't know who that was coming in untouched, but looked like he just ran right past the ball. I don't know how he didn't hit it. Great pressure there, good special teams play. And here we go with the Eagles offense coming back out, trying to put some points on the board just under 11 minutes to go. And proof again that special teams should not just be an afterthought, and it's purposefully – it's purposefully placed in the coach's practicing schedule, and I know Coach Milligan is is definitely practicing it, and the Eagles special teams has been pretty decent so far today. That has not been the problem. First and ten for Eagles. Watson takes the snap, drops back, going downfield. He's got a man. He picks up number 13, Christian Thomas. Great pass. Great pass by Watson, and the Eagles are getting something going in the air. Uh, Watson with the strong arm, flick of the wrist, throws it on the line, and Christian Thomas again, that 6'4", 215 going up over two defenders. And uh, what a great play by Thomas. And now the Eagles have a little momentum. Thomas's size definitely a factor on that play. He had to fight for the ball, but Upper Marion was no match for him there. And Watson was able to get the ball down the field, uh, put him in a good spot. And there you go. The Eagles getting something started on offense here with 10.28 to go in the game. Watson back in the shotgun. Watson drops back, got a little bit of pressure, but he had had a man and can't come down with it. Looked like number nine there, Haynes, was the intended receiver. Yeah, just couldn't make that connection. It had a couple blockers out that way. I think they could have turned it off field for some positive yards. However, it's going to be second and ten. 10-14 here to go in the game. Crowd coming out. Crowd starting to make some noise. The supported Eagles. Ball is on the 45. Second down and 10. Eagles still in the shotgun. Here's the snap. Watson's going to take off. He's got a little bit of room to run, and he picks up about six, about five to six on the play. He's got some speed. He does have some speed. I'll tell you what, that old-school football smart, switching the ball over to the sideline side. Don't even see that on TV all the time anymore. Yep. Watson. Yeah, some good vision by Watson there to be able to see where the hole was, and he just took off. He, he knew there was nothing downfield. He just tucked it away and went. Yeah, I don't think that Denolfi was playing poorly, but since Watson's come in, we definitely see maybe just a little bit of a different energy out there. Uh, whatever that reason is, Watson has, uh, has them moving down the field here. Third and four for the Eagles. Watson drops back. He's got some 13 downfield. Oh! Thomas wants the pass interference call. He is motioning for the referee to call it, but didn't look like there was that much contact downfield. Nah, pretty good coverage there. Uh, ball just a little bit behind him, so, uh, yeah, the defender might have gotten him just a little bit, but uh, 
you know, not not something I think we should have seen the laundry thrown no. out for. With as few penalties as have been called today, it would have been shocking to see that pass interference called there. That is definitely true. I would have taken it, though. Uh, it would have been nice, but it, it's not going to happen. <laughs> well, some confusion here as far as formation, but the Eagles now have three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Watson's in the shotgun. Watson drops back. He's got pressure. He's got somebody downfield, and the pass is complete to number seven, Kirk Wilson. Nice pass out there, finding Wilson in the flat. And, as we said, the Eagles are now getting something done on offense, making a strong, sustained drive. They've got the ball at the 32 with 9.09 here to go in the game. Yeah, by far the best momentum we've seen out of this offense so far today. Nice ball thrown out there by Watson, and Wilson adjusting to the ball. Nice had to sit a little bit in that hole. Makes the catch, goes to the ground, and here we go. we got something going, Dave. Got something going. It's, it's difficult to get that kind of your confidence as a quarterback, particularly if you've seen so much of that quarterback exchange at the center go wrong, and when you get it in your head that you're going to be able to complete a few passes, you're likely to go a little bit downfield and push it a little bit. Upper Marion can no longer just key in on the run. Watson drops back. He's got pressure. That was a danger that we'll see here. What are they going to call? They Oh, Dave, that was Whoa. close. I think that was on the ground. Whoa. Incomplete. Looks from here like the refs made the right call, but that was very close to a lateral. Yeah, very yeah. close. You know, that was uh, dangerous. Sometimes the hardest thing for a playmaker is to realize when you can't make a play. That's one where you just got to tuck it, just take the take loss, the and got to take a loss. Absolutely. That's dangerous. Second and long. Well, second and ten. Watson in the gun. Low snap, Watson's back, he's got something down! Look the last there pass interference go. right there. <laughs> that was, now, that was, um, I think the word is egregious. Yes. <laughs> um, there are pass interference calls that are close. Then there are some that are like that. Yeah, that one, uh, I don't really know what took so long for the flag to come out. Maybe that one slipped in the rain a little bit, but... Definitely it was, couldn't let that one go. Yeah, he definitely could not let that one slide. So the Eagles have had a long and sustained drive here. Watson's arm and that penalty bringing them downfield. It's going to be first down. 18 yards to go, and the Eagles need to score on this drive. Really encouraging sign here as the Eagles getting some life offensively in the fourth quarter. And again, give credit to that defense for keeping the Eagles in this game. Watson back in the shotgun, first and ten. Watson drops back. He's got pressure. Oh, it's picked off. That was a lot of pressure, and you can definitely attribute that interception to the pressure that the Vikings brought up front. They brought five or six on that one. They brought the pressure, and you don't like to see that. Yeah, no, it looked like they, they the Vikings had the left side of their defense stacked a little bit, and they brought some pressure from that side, but I don't think Watson was expecting anybody extra to come on the right side. He turned that way, had a guy in his face, floated it a little bit, yep. and uh, unfortunate turn, losing some momentum here for the Eagles. 8-19 here to go in the game, and Upper Marion, after the big turnover, has the ball on the 29. We'll see if Upper Marion keeps it on the ground here with Zaire Savage in the I formation. It looks like their formation changes a little bit here. Looks like they got their quarterbacks in the shotgun. But the handoff is still 
to number four, Zaire Savage, who picks up about seven yards. Nice gain on first down. Interesting to see them switch up what their, their set formation is here when they were really starting to get their swagger back, running the ball the last couple times they had it. Uh, and now, you know, if you're, if you're the Vikings and you can just march the ball down the field, even if you don't score, take some time off the clock. And I think for this young Eagles team, the key here is to remember, you got eight minutes to go. You need two scores. Right. You're in this. You, you're still in the game. And Upper Marion is obviously going to try to keep it on the ground and eat up some of the clock. We have another injured eagle on the field, and Dennis Flynn. Dennis Flynn has been doing some work here today. He's been out there a couple times. Uh, there's no doubt. He's making a case for uh, athletic trainer of the week. He's athletic trainer of the life of a lifetime. He's he's the man. Like I said, I said this to you, to you earlier. When I'm hurt now, I, you know, as I'm getting older, as I, you know, sleep the wrong way and hurt my neck, and I'm waking up with aches and pains. Go see Flynn. That's sad. That, that's something these kids on the field, they, they can't relate to that. They, they No, absolutely not. They think it'll never happen to them. Charles Barkley, I think, once said, Father Time is undefeated. <laughs> Very true. Very true. Uh, Father Time, he studies his X's and O's and uh, always comes out on top. Father Time is undefeated. So as Mr. Flynn is out there, this is a... Good time to mention again, NASD TV on Instagram, NASD TV on Twitter, and all of the great YouTube archives going back to games from 1979. I've been around Norristown a long time, a proud Norristown graduate. I have seen many of those games in person, and NASD TV has a lot of them up in the YouTube archives that you can check out and enjoy all those memories of the past and the, the athletic glories of past and you know the present well, what a cool thing when you know narstown has such a rich tradition in all kinds of fields but you know especially athletically to be able to go back and watch some of those games and i'm sure somewhere right now there's a you know there's a proud you know mom dad grandma and grandpa saying hey after this game's over we're gonna you know we're you're gonna watch me play right yeah, absolutely and all those games you know from back to roosevelt field to you know here at the new athletic complex being able to go back and check out some of those games is it really it's really neat. I do that from time to time. I mean, a lot of my friends, I, you know, I go back and watch some of those games, and it, it brings back a lot of a lot of really cool memories. Especially about this game. I mean, this game, the the Upper Murray and Norristown game, has been an area tradition for many many years. And I remember as a kid, my parents taking me down to Roosevelt Field to watch this game. So, the like, the Upper Murray and Norristown rivalry definitely brings back some memories. <clears throat> An unwelcome turn of events there on <laughs> second down. That's a huge run, and Norristown's defense, Ed, is getting tired. Well, you know, so often in this game we saw Savage just exploding right through the hole. There was a really patient run. There wasn't anything open right away. He sat back. He waited, and uh, excellent run by that young man. He's, he's had a heck of a game. He's well over 100 yards on the ground at this point, and... Upper Marion, Upper Marion is driving. So Upper Marion's at the 45. The Eagles defense, as I said, they're, they've are they got to be exhausted. Yeah, they have spent a considerable amount of time on the field, and, and in doing that, they really have played a great game so far. Goes nowhere, loss of one or two, and that's an important thing to consider what you just said because it's still only 10-0. Yeah, and that young man who was in there on that tackle, Rashidi Santos, big part of that. feel like every time they need a big play there, he is st standing in the hole. And, uh, yep. again, you know, he's just he's that stocky kid, kind of he built like your prototypical linebacker. He has just kind of plugged up the middle, and he's been in the backfield. He's been causing all sorts of mayhem for Norristown all game. And they're going to need him here to come up big. They're going to need their whole defense to come up big here with 6.24 to go in the game. Looks like the Eagles are bringing some pressure. They do. However, yeah, short gain on the play. Uh, Savage picks up about three or four. They were able to avert a crisis in the backfield, but but still only gain of about three. Yeah, another play where we saw them almost blitz right past the ball carrier, but Najee Beckles there with a nice stick. Uh, and if he doesn't make that tackle, we're probably looking at a first down. And if he, 
if he doesn't make that tackle, it's going to be it's a whole different ball game. Um, the game's over if he doesn't make that tackle. Five forty-two here to go. Third and eight for Upper Marion. Eagles need the ball back now. A turnover here would really hit the spot. Yeah, and it's a chance defensively. You know, now you got to gamble a little bit. You got to go for the strip. You got to, you know, do the things that you wouldn't do earlier in the game. And if it works out, it works out. And if it doesn't, lots of pressure. Oh, an unwise decision there, but that uh, Clayton, very, that was a risky move. The uh, the risk reward ratio for that one was uh, that wasn't good. No, that was Brett Favre esque right that there. Was, that was Favian. That was kind of similar to the play that Watson made earlier where you just got to eat it, especially when you got a 10-point lead. Just just take the sack. It goes against your instincts as a player to want to make something happen, but look, sometimes you just have to take the sack. Vikings are back to punt. The punt is blocked! That was a huge, huge play for Norristown. Uh, Ramir like Wiggins all Ramir over Wiggins that punt, Dave. In. What a play. That was a fantastic play by the Eagles and a much-needed break. Now, Norristown needs to capitalize. They need to score quickly and get the ball back. I wonder if, oh, we're on the same page here, same wavelength. I think if Wiggins doesn't block that, he got two other guys in it right there. Yep. Uh, great, great, great special teams play. Yeah, they were definitely told definitely told to bring the pressure, and they did. It's going to bring up first and 10 for Norristown. Great field position. Ball is on the 45. Watson's in the gun. Three receivers to the far side, one to the near side. Snap is low. Got some pressure, but he, oh, it's intercepted, but there's pass interference again. All right, well, there you go. You see them taking some chances down the field, and, uh, yeah, definitely some contact down there. Sloan kind of had his legs clipped out from that, under him. That, Yeah, he caught him going over the middle. They're going to call pass interference on that one every time. They're just confirming. We'll see. They're waving off the flag. Oh, that's not good for the Eagles. No, and Coach Milligan is not happy. He is uh, seeking an explanation. Coach Lusain is also uh, enthusiastically rebutting the referee's decision. I'll tell you, only an AP English teacher can make it sound so eloquent. I I do my best. Um, I wonder if... Hmm, yeah, it's a spirited discussion down there on the sideline, but that is the third turnover for the Eagles and a huge break for the Vikings. Yeah, well, such a critical spot. Game on the line right there. It definitely looked like he had his legs clipped out, but we are where we are in five minutes to go. Vikings with the ball. Handoff goes to Zaire Savage, and it goes nowhere. And there's a flag on the play. <clears throat> so <clears throat> it goes from there being maybe two penalties called the first half to now about five or six here in the second. Yeah, well, that just goes to show when you have a microphone in your hand and you make any kind of a statement, you will always be proven wrong. Absolutely. Hmm. The old offsetting personal foul penalty. So 4.53 here to go. The ball is going nowhere. It's still going to be second and long. The clock starts again. 
Second and 14. I will say my whole life, that's one thing I've never understood. You know, every other you know facet of life, two wrongs don't make a right. right. But in football, two personal fouls, you're perfectly fine. They're perfect. Everything's, yeah, everything's fine. Something goes horribly awry there for Upper Marion. Going to lose a couple yards. The exchange in the backfield just did not go well at all. Now, Dave, I'm going to tell you this. Obviously, this game's not over yet, but with four minutes to go, we are in do-or-die time. But four minutes to go, down by 10, there is no quit from this Eagles defense. They are surrounding the ball, trying to make something happen. That is a really encouraging sign moving forward. For the defense, absolutely. They're tired. They've been on the field the entire game pretty much. The offense really hasn't been able to get that much done. With the exception of a few long drives and <clears throat> a few great passes, the offense has been fairly stagnant, but this defense has kept them not only in the game, but also, as you said, gives them some positive things to look forward to going forward. And, as if on cue, Upper Marion breaks a long run. Yeah, I almost feel as though I should apologize. Yeah. We were just talking about, in particularly, swarming the ball and the run defense. And then right after that, Zaire Savage breaks off a long run. And that looks like that run and this weather, both contributing to dampen the Eagles' collective spirits. I'll tell you what, after you know, uh, just continually trying to pound it up the middle, the Vikings did show something a little different there, showed the pitch to the outside. Something that the Vikings, uh, the Eagles have not seen much today. Right. Uh, good play call there by the Vikings offensively. That brings kind of Zaire Savage's speed into play. I haven't seen all that much. He's been powering it up the middle, but he can definitely run as well. Narsan's got to bring a lot of pressure here. They do. But Savage breaks it outside, and there are flags all over the place. Yeah, kudos to uh, Zaheer Haynes there. Making the tackle, it definitely looked like he was held for the better part of 10 yards running laterally to make that tackle. We'll see what the call is. Referee's coming out to make it. Going to be holding on the Vikings. So that run is coming back, but with only 2.57 here to go, they better capitalize on something. We'll see where they spot this one. This is always an adventure, too. It is an inexact science. It certainly is, because uh, where is it being spotted? Okay. Okay. Ball is on the 48. It's going to bring up second down. No, it's still first down. Man, this is a lot of math here that I've got to kind of do in my mind. Yeah, we're, as we, we're going to have to call in. This is a, a, lot, department here. It's a lot of math for this late in the game. Nowhere to go on that one, but 2.31 to go in the game. So it's either second down or third down because we have definitely some conflicting business going on between the scoreboard and the field. So it's, it's down, down like 2.5. No, now they've figured it out. Now everyone says it's second down. So there's kind of like this universal confirmation that it is, in fact, second down. It's second, but... We don't know how long it is because it looks like eight there, but it's seven on the board. This is too much. I'm getting no, dizzy. I, just like that. Just like the Eagles defense. We're, we're all getting a little exhausted. Here. <laughs> all right, here we go. A minute 52 to go in the game. Pitch goes out to Zaire Savage. It does not go anywhere this time. The Eagles definitely going for the ball. Um. They do not come up with it. The Eagles are taking a timeout with 1.41 to go in the game. Yeah, and again, just an impressive effort by this Eagles defense. Yeah, you're you're under two minutes to go. You're down by 10, and absolutely no quick. Christian Thomas again making a nice play out uh, out on the wing. 
They're bringing a lot of heat to the ball. They're getting there. They're swarming. But what they're going to need to do in the weeks ahead is they're going to need to make a more concerted effort to get something going on offense earlier. Because, Ed, they have a difficult Pac-10 schedule coming up, and they have some of the best teams in the area that they're going to be playing in the next in the upcoming weeks. So next week, of course, we have PW here at 1 o'clock start. But then after that, the real kind of meat of the schedule happens with Springford followed by PV. Two tough games. They were really big losses last year for the Eagles. And Springford and PV and some of those perennial Pac-10 powerhouses, the, if the Eagles are going to be successful this season, the Eagles are going to get something done. They really have to get something done on offense, and they have to get that started much earlier in the game than they did today. Yeah, I'll tell you, you know, to, to show you just how, uh, you know, intense the competition in the pack is, this Eagles team last year, you know, with uh, I believe they had four wins on the season, but they had 13 seniors, and seven of those seniors are playing on Saturdays now. You know, it, it's, yep. it's not as if they were fielding an uncompetitive team. Right. Um, you know, but week after week, you're going to face tough opponent after tough opponent. Uh, but this team here, with a lot of younger players, a lot to build upon. 141 to go in the game. Savage breaks it wide open. There's a flag on the play. There's been a flag on every play recently. That has been a very, very huge, huge play for the Vikings. But it looks like this one may be coming back. An illegal block for the Vikings. Well, Dave, another cool thing about the pack is uh, it's a lot of friendly rivalries. And uh, we're getting a little assistance here in the booth today from our friends from Upper Marion who are broadcasting the game. Uh, so we got uh, our two announcers from Upper Marion who, you know, our camera was not uh, functioning the way that we wanted it to, so they shared their facilities with us. Uh, Brian, Brian Regan, Regan and Tom Kohler over there helping us out in the Viking Channel. Our camera fell under some, uh, we had some technical difficulties upstairs, and our friends from Upper Marion have helped us out. So, Brian, Tom, thank you guys so much. And, of course, we have to give a, a shout-out to the one and only John Doyle. Uh, that man just is unbelievable, does a tremendous amount of work, and none of this happens without him. One minute, 31 seconds to go in the game. Clock still winding down. Norristown takes another timeout. It's tough to believe it's kind of raining inside the booth, too. <laughs> so, like, the rain is outside. But even though this is a wonderful booth, we got the windows open, which is great in a way, but in another way, like, we're all wet. You know, I was, uh, I was thinking about that, but then I felt better because I got a glimpse of Mr. Doyle, who's been working up on the roof. upstairs. And that man is absolutely drenched. He's like wringing ring, out his beard. Yeah, like so, so it made me feel better, and I really appreciate that. <laughs> While we are wet, we are much drier than he. So, so that's good. <laughs> <laughs> this is like watching the movie Inception. There's so many layers. There's so many layers to NASD TV. <laughs> and Valeria Sanchez, who is uh, lending a great hand, leading the way here with the TV efforts. Uh, just an amazing, amazing kid. Part of that great JROTC crew. Fourth down. It's a handoff. A powerful surge up the middle. But the clock is going to stop a minute 20, and, I mean, there are very few options other than throwing it deep and hoping something good happens. You're going to have to put this one up, and I predict that you're going to go to Christian Thomas downfield. Uh, I mean, why wouldn't you? He uh, walks the halls, and he makes me feel short. So if I had to throw it somebody, that's what I would throw it. So he's made a couple of really good plays today, and he's also shown that it doesn't matter if you double cover him. Huge target for the Eagles. He has he, he has overcome double coverage here a couple times. So there are few other options here late in the game for the Eagles. I 
I'll tell you what, though. You're looking at far side. You got Gabe Randall up there, number four. He is 6'3", 210. And you got a pair of huge wide receivers out there. Denolfi back in at quarterback. Vikings come up with a sack. Clock continues to run. It's going to be second and really, really long as the game winds down here with a minute to go. Incomplete pass. It's going to be second and 21 with 49 seconds to go in the game. Well, we are uh, we are told by athletic director Tony Palladino he is guaranteeing good weather for next week's game. Uh, so, you know, when he guarantees something, I believe it because he guaranteed we were going to have a great pep rally last night. And uh, if you were not there, I'll tell you what, uh, if you're watching this and you weren't at the pep rally last night, next time we hold one, you got to come out. What a great showing of school spirit. What did Tony have to say about the weather for today? Did he make any predictions about that? I am going to plead the fifth. I'm not gonna answer <laughs> it's going to be 72 and sunny, Ed. <laughs> Another sack. This is basically like, at this point, fourth and a marathon. Two consecutive sacks, 39 seconds to go in the game. There, you got to go in the gun. you got to throw it deep. But it doesn't look like things are going to work out here today for the Eagles. No, it does not. It looks like, uh, you know, we'll, we'll put a loss on the record today. But, again, I think there are definitely some positive things to build on. Uh, you know, I think, you know, you watch these guys on the sideline, and, you know, sometimes you learn a lot about a team when you know the game is over. Uh, these guys, are, they're not pouting. They're not walking around with their head down. Uh, they're still engaged in the game. You know, they, they believe in what's going on here. Uh, and I think that that is such an important thing as you're starting a new regime here for Eagles football. You know, definitely positives for today for the Eagles include the play of the defense, um, particularly the tenacity of the defense. They gave up too much on the ground. So I'm imagining that Lusain this week is going to be working a lot on that. The offense simply has to do a much better job at sustaining drives. You saw some glimpses of some being able to get the ball downfield. However, the offense has been, got to be able to do a better job there in keeping and sustaining drives and particularly picking up yards on the ground. They have done nothing on the ground today, and that needs to change. Yeah, that is definitely true. we got to get that push up front. You know, the Lions played hard all day, but they haven't been able to clear many holes. Uh, almost didn't matter who you were going to give the ball to. They didn't really have a lot of place to run. There was nowhere to run today. Looks like a turnover on downs for Norristown. Upper Marion's going to pick it up here at the 30-yard line. And Ed, it looks like this game is winding to a close here at the Norriston Area High School Athletic Complex. It does. Uh, you know, Dave, I, I got to tell you, it's been uh, been really nice, uh, you know, at least being here. You know, we still, even game coming to an end, cheerleaders, our nationally uh, recognized cheerleaders, still here, toughing it out. And, uh, you know, it's a loss here tonight, but you know what I'm excited about is three days from now we, we get to we get to kick off a school year. You know, these guys are going to come into hallways and do, uh, you know, make our school proud. And if you haven't seen what's going on at this high school lately, uh, you should really see what these, these kids and our faculty are doing. And one of the, one of the great things about having a, a – the stadium having a place where everybody can kind of get together is the football team and like a lot of our sports teams and our athletics really give this school an opportunity to like have this place to be able to to get together to hang out to show the school pride i remember you know it's one of the things i remember from my high school times you know the big pep rallies and all that stuff and getting fired up for the for the big game and hopefully as we continue to do good things here at the athletic complex we'll be able to get even more of a crowd out no doubt about it. Great things yet to come. Today wasn't our day, but we've got a lot of great days coming in the future. And remember always to check out NASD TV on Comcast Channel 28, Verizon Channel 45. And check out the Eagle's Eye on Saturday and Sunday.
times for that, and 9 a.m. and 9 p.m. So keep watching the Eagle's Eye. Check things out and keep abreast of what's going on. That brings a close here as the Norristown Area High School Eagles fall 10-0 to the Upper Marion Vikings. Tough game for all parties concerned. And Upper Marion, it wasn't like they had that much of a game either. I mean, Upper Marion wasn't able to get that much done. Were it not for the runs of Zaire Savage and over 100 yards he gained on the ground, this would be a very different game. But, as I said before, those things did happen. And for Norristown to be successful, they're going to need to, they're going to need to be able to consistently stop the run and establish the run on offense. Yeah, and it's kind of what you almost had to expect. Game started in the pouring rain. Uh, you knew it was going to be a little sloppy. You knew that you weren't going to see a ton of points put on the board. And uh, definitely a, a tough loss. Uh, but, yeah, you're right. I, we, if, if, you know, the running game on both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively, that was the difference today. And, uh, you know, coaches are, are going to work hard in that film room and on the practice field in order to make sure that that is not the difference maker like it was today. They absolutely are. So they're going to be doing that job in the film room. And next week we have the Plymouth White Marsh Colonials. And we're going to be here on Saturday at 1 o'clock. My name is Dave Fazzini, and along with Ed Roth for NASD, Channel 28, Comcast, Channel 45, Horizon. Pleased to bring you the Battle of the Bridge. Keep watching NASD TV. Follow Twitter. Follow Instagram. Check it out. Everybody have a good night.